Hey y'all, how's it going? I'm B1Trash and welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to follow up on my original Megabricks Tune Shader video. In that video I showed you how to replace the Megabricks materials with the Tune Shader. In this video I'll show you how to incorporate the Tune Shader into the Megabricks materials so that they'll be automatically applied whenever you import a model. To do this we'll be utilizing the node groups that Scrubs has built into the Megabricks materials in Blender. I've created this material tester model on Megabricks. The link for this model is in the description. It uses each of the 10 material types available in Megabricks, all the way from solid to chrome in each column. Each of these has its own base shader node in Blender, so once we incorporate the tune shader to each of these, our custom shader will apply automatically to any Megabricks model we import. So let's export our model and open it up in Blender. I'm going to start with the general template. I'm going to select everything using A, hit X, and then select Delete to get rid of everything. I'll go to File, Import, and Mechabricks, and import the model we just exported. If you don't have the Mechabricks import option, I've got a video that will show you how to install the Mechabricks plugin. If you're running Blender version 3.4 and above, and you're getting errors on the import, I would go to mechabricks.com and re-download and reinstall the Mechabricks plugin. Blender 3.4 brought some changes that broke the plugin, so Scrubs rewrote it to make it work again. Okay, let's get started with the tune shader. I'm gonna change the viewport shading to material preview, I'm going to grab the bar, move it up, and change this window into a shader editor. Clicking on any of these parts will bring up the shader nodes. Mechabricks materials are made up of multiple node groups. You can tell they're node groups because they have a green header at the top, and they also have this icon up here. If you click on the icon, it'll bring you into the node group, and then if you click on this up arrow, it'll bring you back out of it. Each of the node groups has inputs, as you can see from the outside here. If you go on the inside, you can see where these group inputs come and connect to the different parts. I'm going to start with the solid material. This group controls the materials for all of the solid pieces. So all of these over here in this column. The group inputs give us control only for this one material. So I can change the color or the roughness and it's only going to affect the red part at the top. But if I open up the material, any changes I make are going to affect everything that uses the solid material. Knowing this, we can build our two material up here, plug it into the group output, and use the Mechabricks materials to automatically apply our tune shader to every Mechabricks part we import. Now instead of building the tune material from scratch, I'm going to go ahead and use the one from the file that we made during the last tutorial. I'll use the feature called Append. So I go to File and Append, and find the file that we used last time to make the tune shader. Select the file and click on the Append button, and we'll scroll down to Materials. We'll open it up. And I'm going to grab one of my base tune colors, and I'm also going to grab the transparent color since that was different from the base shader. Click on the append button, and now we've got these materials inside of our model. That was a good time to save. I'll hit Control S, create a new file, and save it. In order to see the material we just imported, we have to apply it to an object. I don't want to mess with any of the parts we just imported, so I'm going to add a cube. I'm going to move my mouse up to the 3D viewport, hit Shift A, and then click on cube. I'll scale it up by hitting S and sliding my mouse over until I've got the scale that I want. I'm going to move my cube over here by hitting G to grab it and then hitting Shift Z so it won't move on the Z axis. That way I can get it out front without it having disappear below or going up too high. Now down here, I'm going to click on this material button. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and grab my tune purple shader. Everything we need to drive this material is in these nodes right here. So I'm going to copy these, Control C, click back on my part, open up the group and paste in my nodes. In our old setup, we were manually changing the color right here with this little input. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab the group input for color for the part and plug it into this node, and grab the color output and plug it into the output shader. And as you can see up here, all of these parts now have the tune shader applied. To clean things up, I'm gonna select all of my nodes. I'm gonna hit Control G to make a group. Now we've got all the nodes we just had inside of this group, and if we back out of it, this is what the Mechabricks solid base material looks like now. So we've used their color to go into our group, and then we're exporting it to the shader. We're basically bypassing Scrubs nodes. Now we've got a group that we can reuse. So if I hit Control C and copy this group, I can click on another material, go into the base material for say rubber, and paste it in. From here, I'll plug color to color, and color to shader out. And now all of my rubber parts have the exact same texture that my solid parts do. For the purposes of a tune shader, this will work just fine for me. 
if you notice before, our spec material actually made some changes whenever we made changes to the solid material. That's because it's a mix of solid and metallic. So let's work with metallic next, and what you'll see is when we fix metallic, we'll also fix the speckle. So I'll click on one of my metallic parts, go into the base material group, paste in our node, connect up the color, and then connect the color output to the shader output. Now all of our speckle parts and our metallic parts have been fixed as well. We can do the same thing with the pearlescent. Paste it in, grab the color, plug it in, and that's been fixed as well. I'll do the same thing for the chrome, but I'd like this one to display a little bit different. So again, we can see that this node group is being shared across different material types. For Chrome, I want it to be different. So if I click on this number, it's going to make this its own node group. So now any changes I make in here won't affect the other types of materials. It'll only affect the Chromes. If I come in here, I can go to my principal shader. I can grab metallic and turn that up. It's just going to make it look a little bit different and hopefully separate Chrome for other materials. You can do this with anything you want. Remember, anytime you want to change something for just one type of material, make sure you're making the node group unique. Otherwise, you'll affect previous materials. Next up, I want to work with the transparents. So I need to get the transparent tune shader up. So I'll click on my sacrificial cube and add the tune trans blue shader to it. I can copy all the nodes, click on one of my transparent parts, go into the base material for it, paste these in. Let's move these up here out of the way and get things ready to go. Now, one of the interesting things about group inputs is you can duplicate them. So if I hit Shift D, this will duplicate the group input. I can bring it up here and I can plug things in. It'll still be down here, but it'll be here as well. So it's just two different instances of the group inputs. Now two extra notes that transparent parts have that solid parts don't have is diffusion factor and emission. So what I wanna do is I wanna use these to drive some of the values we have inside these nodes. You can take the emission, tie it into our value in the multiply node, then we'll come down and grab the group output and duplicate it bring it up here just to make things neat. Now we'll select all of our nodes, hit Control G to group them, and now we can back out. We can see that our node group is a lot cleaner looking. Now in the 3D viewport, we can see that all of our parts have turned black. So why is that? Well, our material is an emission material, and it's using this group input for the emission. If we back out of this, we can see that our emission value is zero. And if we drive that up, we can see now that we're emitting something. So to make sure we've always got some type of emission going on, we'll go in and head and edit our node group. So we'll drive back in and take a look. So this value here is what we're picking up from the Mechabrix emission input. If we look down here, it runs into this multiply node. If we multiply by zero, we get a value of zero. So to fix this, I'm gonna move this over, hit Shift A, and search for a math node. I'll drop that in on the value, and then add in a value of one. I'll move these over to give a little bit of space. But now if we go back to the base material, we can see driving up the emission value here is going to affect our part. If we want to control the emission values for all of our parts at once, all we have to do is come in here and adjust the emission value inside of our node group. If you want to have individual part control, leave it back at one and then control your emissions from the outside. And the last material we're going to work with is milky, which is basically glow in the dark. So because it has this emission to it, I'm going to copy the node group from the transparent materials because that is already dealing with emission. So copy that, come back over here, drill into our base material, and paste it in. I'll duplicate this group input, connect the color to color, connect the emission to our value, and then connect the color output from the node group over to the shader. Now we should have our glow-in-the-dark pieces complete. However, if we want to make these different from the transparent pieces, again, we talked about this little number here. If I click on this, this node group here is now going to be different from these, which all use the transparent group. So now I can make changes here drive this value down, and you can see only these glow-in-the-dark pieces have changed, and none of the transparent parts have been affected because the two different groups are separate now. And with that, we've got our base materials built. Now, if you want to tweak things, for instance, making the rubber look different from solid, we can go in and click on the rubber material, go into our base material, and look at this number here. This is being shared between solid, speckle, and rubber. If I click on this, this is now just the rubber material. I can go into the group and change around my parameters. And as you can see, rubber is now its own thing. There's one last material I want to show you. Let's open up our cube and select a new material. If I scroll up to the top, I've got this one with the F in front of it. This is MB nodes. If I click on that, the material disappears. And that's because this material isn't actually designed to be used as a material for things. Instead, it's actually a collection of all of the groups that Scrubs has put together for Mechabricks materials. And these nine groups right here are the ones that we just modified.
So if we go in and look at Brace Solid, we can see that there's the group change that we made. So we don't need any of these parts anymore. I can right-click in the Material Tester collection and select Delete Hierarchy, and that'll get rid of everything. Now the last thing we need to do is add the outlines back in. I'm going to add one of these materials to our cube just so that we can see everything that's going on. I'm going to make sure that my mouse is in the 3D viewport, hit Shift A, and add a grease pencil blank object. Now down here, I'm going to click on this wrench, which opens up the modifier tab. I'm going to add a line art modifier, and I'm going to use a collection for the outlines. So up here, I'll add a new collection, and I'm going to call it Outline This. I'm going to add another collection and call it Outlines. Sometimes our outlines can be pretty intensive on the computer, and it makes things really choppy, especially if you're moving the camera around. So if I move this grease pencil object into this outlines container, I now have a checkbox that turns off the processing from the computer. So this can really improve performance again, especially if I'm moving the camera around. Okay, now back to the modifier. I'll click on collection and choose outline this. And I'll choose the top layer and the top material and drive the line thickness all the way up. I could take my cube and drop into outline this, but nothing happens. Again, we talked about this needing to be a camera effect. So in my 3D viewport, I'm gonna hit shift A at a camera, and I'll hit Control alt zero to make the camera see what I'm seeing right now. And now we've got the outlines on our cube, and everything's ready to go. I'm going to click on the cube and delete it, and if I disable and re-enable the outlines collection, all those lines go away. I'm going to drag my camera up here and rename this to scene stuff. This is where I like to keep things like cameras, lights, and whatnot. With this, our template file is done. I'll save this and I'll make one final change. In Windows, I'm going to right click on my Blend file, go to Properties, change this to Read Only. Now if I try to save this, Blender actually won't save anything for me. And this is what I want because this is a template file. So let's take this for a test drive. I've got the Gundam Vita from Mockmaster that we posed last time, and these two ships from Spectre Vamp and Liwan. I'll export all three of these and bring them into Blender. Now I can import any of these by using File and Import and go into Megabricks. Now when we zoom out, the model disappears. That's because Megabricks models are pretty big. If I hit the N key, it's going to bring up my options on the right. If I go over here to View, I can click on this and increase the clip end. What this does is it tells the camera to look further out than its base default of 1,000 meters. I'll reposition the camera with Control alt 0 and if I hit the Home key, it's going to maximize it in the window I've got. Since I don't need the shader editor anymore, I'll drag this down and hit the Home key again so that I've got a good view of what I'm working with. As you can see, the shader is applied, but the lines aren't. So I'll take my model collection and drop it in to outline this. If I toggle my outlines off and then back on, wait a little bit, the lines will pop in. Now if you look down here, you can see some of the foot is clipping out of the picture. Why is that? We came up here and fixed the clipping in the view, but we're still missing it in the foot. That's because we're actually looking through the camera right now. If I rotate out of this, we can see we got the whole grid in view and the whole robot in view. If I hit zero to go back into the camera view again, the foot's gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the camera, go to the camera settings, and I need to change the clip in there as well. I'll add a couple zeros, and that'll fix the clipping issue that we had in the camera. So for every camera you add, you're going to have to adjust the clipping in it. And every time you open a new 3D viewport, you might have to adjust the clipping there as well. For instance, if we go to another tab up here, 3D viewport will be different from the one in layout. One last adjustment I'll make is to clear up where these lines are starting to disappear. I'm going to right click on the empty, select the hierarchy, and then I'm going to hold down shift and click on one of the parts in there just to make sure that I'm working with a part and not the empty. Before I do this, I'm going to toggle off the outlines, and then I'll switch over to edit mode, select A just to make sure everything is selected, and then M and B. And what this does is it merges all of the vertices by distance. Beckerbrick's models import as different planes that are near each other. What we want to do is kind of glue these as solid pieces. When we do that, we can tab out of edit mode and turn our outlines back on, and now we can see they're a little bit sharper. If we switch to render view, it looks like our tune shader went away. And that's because the lighting isn't the same as it was with material preview. So to fix this, we can either go to the world tab and add an HDRI texture, or we can add lights to the scene. To add an HDRI, we can click on the color dot, and then come up here to the top to environment texture, and then open up an HDRI we've downloaded. A great place to grab these from is polyhaven.com. To get rid of the background, we can go to our scene properties, go down to film, click on transparent. If you'd rather light it like we did in the previous video, we can go back to the world tab, just turn the strength all the way down, and then we'll add in some lamps. With the mouse in the 3D viewport, 
I'll hit Shift A, look for light, and this time I'm going to add a sunlight. I'll come over here to the light properties and boost the strength. I grab this dot and adjust the angle that the sun's coming from. The position of the sunlight object doesn't matter. All that really matters is the angle that it's coming from and the settings you have in here. If I hit zero, I can see how my picture is going to look. I think that's nice, but I want this eye glow to be a little bit better. I'll come in and select the eye part and bring my shader tab back up. Now, because we set this up to use the emission nodes from the base material, all I have to do is increase or decrease this value to get a good look that I want. I think that looks good there. I'd say I'm pretty happy with that. If you're not happy with the framing, you can go ahead and readjust the camera. I'd recommend turning off the outlines before you adjust the camera. Get everything composed the way you want it and then turn the outlines back on. Now because we made some tweaks with the clipping values and the lighting, I want to go ahead and resave this as my template. So I'll come over and delete this collection by right clicking and deleting the hierarchy. I'll drag this window down and make sure I'm in the camera view with zero. And then I'll reset my camera position by hitting the home button to fill up the entire screen. I can hit the end button to get rid of my options menu. Now this file is ready to save again. So let me open this back up and turn off the read only on it. Save my shader and then turn read only back on. Now I'm ready for importing anything. So let's start from scratch. I'll close out Blender and open up a new file. The auto tune shader is here in my recent files. So I'll open it from here. Now I can go to file, import, mecha bricks, find a model to import. Now it doesn't look like the tune shader is applied yet. Instead we're in the solid view. So we'll switch back over to the rendered view. Now we've got the tune shader applied. I can come in here and adjust the emission on my lights. And if I want to add the bloom, go back over to my EV settings and enable bloom here. I can also adjust the emission value from the canopy separate from the lights. That's because we're using the value here on the base material group and not on the inside in the group that we made. From here, we just have to drop this into the outline this folder and turn on the outlines again. These grease pencil lines can be very processor intensive. And one of the things that doesn't help is the stud logos. If you want to help performance, one thing you could do is import your model without the stud logos. Just uncheck the logo on stud option before you make your import. So that's basically it. We can use this file to work with any model that we want to apply a tune shader to. Just open your template file and import any Mechabrix model you want to. Drag the model into the outline this folder and switch to the rendered view. Make sure you're in the camera and turn on the outlines. Remember, moving the camera around can be tricky, so if it's giving you problems, deselect the outlines, compose your shot, get the camera selected where you want it to be, and then turn the outlines back on. If you want to fix the visibility of the outlines, there's a couple of things you can do. One we've already talked about is merging all the points. So right click on the empty, select the hierarchy, hold down shift, click on one of the parts, tab to go into edit mode, a just to make sure you've selected all the parts and then M to merge and then B by distance. Tab back out and that should start your fix. Additionally, there may be areas that you always want to see lines. For instance, on this cockpit piece here, I'd like to always see these lines. So if I click on this and hit tab, I can go into edit mode. If I hit two on my keyboard, it'll go into line select mode up here. So one selects vertices, two selects lines and three selects faces. I'm going to select these lines here, and then I'm going to go to the edge menu, and I'm going to mark these as a freestyle edge. And when I tab out of edit mode, now you can see that these lines will always show up. And the last thing I want to say about these lines is make sure you're looking through the camera when you're viewing the lines. As you can see over here on this part, the lines don't look too good, but we're not actually looking at them through the camera. These lines are projected from the camera, so anywhere that it isn't seen by it, you're not going to have any lines at all. And in some of the areas, you're going to have jagged edges or just weird looking lines. So the easiest way to make sure you're in camera view is just pan around the model and then hit the number pad zero to get back into camera view. And this will make sure that what you're looking at is what the renderer is going to see from the camera itself. And again, anytime I'm looking through the camera, I like to hit the home button so that I can see the entire view. From here, it's lighting, composition, and backgrounds. You can render your image and hopefully you'll have something you can be proud of. Now when we want to save it, because we made it a read-only file, all we have to do is hit save as and save it as whatever we want. We still have our original file that's going to be our template, but now we've got this thing that we can work with and modify and do whatever we want to it. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching and have a good night. Cheers.